pleasure to welcome all of you to City Hall for tonight's joint meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, take the role, if I may. Mr. McCready, please take the role. Alderman Bruno. Bruno here. Alderman Burgart. Alderman Aruby. Here. Alderman Caven. Here. Alderman Kilberg. Here. Alderman Kosrog. Here. Alderman Maladra. Here. Alderman Mayer. Here. Alderman Swanson. Here. Mayor Burns. Present. And Alderman Marks is uh, unavailable this evening. Alderman Marks is enjoying uh, visiting his grandson, so he is out of state. And if I could call SPAC as well. Yes, please do. Frankel. Here. Malecki. I'm here. Schwab. Here. Manon. Here. Kellen. Here. Kafer. Here. Good enough. And informed us that she was uh, ill this evening and un unable to join us, and Ellett. Here. And then Mon uh, Mr. Monaco is traveling and currently out of country. So. Excellent. Item two on the agenda, folks, is to uh, entertain a motion to waive Robert's rules of order for tonight's meeting. So moved. Motion by Kosarog, seconded by Swanson. Before taking a voice vote to do so, just a gentle reminder to everyone, uh, when Chairwoman Frankel recognizes you. Uh, we ask that all others this evening extend the courtesy for that individual to speak, irrespective of uh, their position or perhaps their comments. We ask for no interruptions as well. We are broadcasting live, so there are folks tuning in. Any questions regarding that? All in favor of waiving the rules, please indicate by saying aye. 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 No aye. Thank you, Mike. The rules are waived. It's my pleasure to turn the meeting over to our chairwoman. Ms. Frankel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Burns. Um, I want to begin by saying thank you to City Council for hosting us this evening, and thank you to the Mayor as well. And although we have done roll call, I'd also like to begin by um, suggesting that we're both informative and collaborative in this meeting by starting out with an, a brief introduction. So if everyone could just go around and say your name, your role, and how, how much time you've spent either on SPAC or as an alderman for, this, for the city. I'll start. My name is Winnie Frankel. I am the chair of the Strategic Planning Advisory Committee, and I don't remember how long it's been. Four years or so? Uh, Billy Malachy. I'm the current secretary of uh, SPAC. I've been on for just about four years as well. <clears throat> I'm Amy Mayer. I'm the alderman of the fourth ward, one of the two. Uh, I have been on city council for two years now, almost two years. I'm Alexa Schwab. I've uh, been on SPAC for about six years, I think. <laughs> Brett Kostrog, Alderman, Second Ward, and um, two years on City Council, and then a few years for uh, Planning and Advisory Committee as well mm -hmm. before that. I'm Melanie Mannon, and I've been on SPAC for about two years now. Alderman Swanson, I represent the fifth ward, and I was elected in 2017, so this is my fifth year. Um, Alderman Caven from the uh, from the fourth ward, and I have been on the council for three and a half years. Dave Ellett, and I have been on SPAC for three years, approximately. Uh, I'm Craig Maladra, and I'm much younger than this is going to sound. Um, <laughs> So I was on SPAC from its beginning until 2003, and I've been on the City Council since 2003, so however long that is. Jim Kafer, I've been on SPAC for three years. I'm Becky Ruby. I've been uh, Alderwoman for the third board in Geneva for, I was going to say six years, but Alderman Swanson said five years, and we were elected at the same time. So <laughs> we're coming up on six years. So halfway through my second term. Thanks. Uh, I'm Mia Kellen, and I'm new as of August of this year. Dean Kilberg, uh, third ward, and I've been on the council for uh, 11 years. Uh, ben McCready, uh, SPAC Liaison, Assistant City Administrator, Director of Administrative Services, and I've been here with the Fair City of Geneva for four years now. Kevin Burns, everyone. Uh, I've been in Geneva almost 50 years. I began on the City Council in 1997, and I've 
about halfway through my 22nd year as mayor. Uh, Mike Bruno, I'm the first ward alderman for I think going on about 10 years now. Uh, before that was I believe 12 years on historic preservation. Um, that's it. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I also um, appreciate that time seems to be flying by for all of us because we're having so much fun. <laughs> Can't quite remember those dates specifically. Okay, so as we all know here, based on the agenda, we're here to talk about the bike plan, or at least the, the strategic plan, planning advisory committee's efforts to understand and con comprehensively uh, share with you all our efforts into understanding more about what's going on with biking in Geneva. Um, just a little bit of an overview and uh, overarching agenda for the evening. I will begin just by giving us our introductions, and then I will turn it over to Ms. Melanie Mannon, and she is going to discuss what we did in terms of research and history relative to biking in Geneva. And then Mr. Kafer will uh, take on any recommendations based on the experiences that we've had thus far. So if you can turn your attention to the presentation. I was going to see if, uh, Pete, if you could help us uh, maximize the presentation window. while we wait patiently for that. Um, I think it's important that we contextualize that the strategic plan contains information specific to biking in Geneva. So while this was of personal interest to many of us who are on the strategic planning advisory committee, it was not born out of necessarily our own interests. It was born out of how can we move forward as a strategic planning committee and do something relevant to what we as a city um, have determined is something that is part of our vision and our values and what we would like to see moving forward. So we used that to inform um, our next steps in terms of the efforts that we were making as a committee. I, um, I think since you're the presenter, it's not going to go there. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank so you, I always make it look so easy, right? It's just one arrow on the corner. Um, okay. So. To that point, um, we use the strategic plan to inform how we did our research and the information that we uh, sought after to understand what biking looked like in other cities and also what it's meant to look like for us in Geneva. Um, so in the strategic plan, which I know everyone knows really well, front and back, right? <laughs> Uh, myself included. Um, one of the visions under quality of life, it specifically says that part of our vision for the city of Geneva in 2020, 2025 is that residents and visitors will benefit from efforts to improve bicycle and pedestrian safety that enhance access to civic and cultural amenities. Diving down even further into the strategic plan under the outcomes and objectives portion, um, we discuss the three outcomes the overarching outcomes that are directly affected by biking in Geneva, the first of which is economic vitality, environmental stewardship, which feels incredibly obvious relative to biking, and then quality of life as well. And then even within those outcomes are these very specific objectives that, again, because I know we're all versed in the vision and strategic plan, we don't need to go through each one individually, but those were our driving forces when we went through this biking in Geneva conversation. Um, the action items specifically under quality of life was broken down into things that are, I think, very reasonable. They're things that are very actionable. I mean, that's why the strategic plan is created in the way that it is, where we talk about a vision of what we want Geneva to look like and then specific things that we can actually accomplish relative to our plan. And so we really tried to be very mindful of that as we go through this process because when, and just as you all know, when something is presented to you relative to city planning or content, you know, there's the sky is the limit sometimes. The information that exists is, um, you know, it's just there's more to everything than you would have ever anticipated. So um, when I turn over to Melanie, I want everyone to keep mindful again of what our, our actual abilities are in terms of explaining biking <laughs> in Geneva. Um, and then again, the very specific action items that we and you as city council really have the, the power to implement um, in your roles. Um, I'm gonna walk us through Mike. our approach. Thank you. 
Um, I'm going to walk us through our approach a bit here, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the information that we uncovered while we were researching biking in other communities, what biking's like right now in Geneva, uh, just to give you kind of a, uh, some context for the recommendations that Jim will be uh, sharing with you at the end. Um, so we can go to the next one. Uh, so the first thing that we did is we reviewed uh, plans uh, that Geneva's already signatories to. So we've already uh, looked at biking quite a bit in Geneva, and uh, you'll see some handouts in front of you, this plan and policy um, elements. Uh, we reviewed the City of Geneva bike, um, Bikeway implement, Implementation Plan, the Climate Action Plan, the Greenest Region Compact, and the Downtown Station Area Master Plan. Um, I kind of combed through those um, in some bit of detail, and there's a lot of recommendations already in those documents that Geneva's already signed into, some of which we've put into place and some of which we haven't. Um, what you have in front of you um, is kind of a summary of some of the highlights and they sort of encapsulate the feel of the recommendations and action items in all those documents. So some of them are pulled directly, some of them are a, a summary, but it kind of gives you a feel of the breadth of things that we as a city have already signed on and, and said that we were um, aiming, aiming to do. So you can read all that at your leisure. Um, but that kind of gave us a, a good framework to say, okay, we know, that, uh, we know that people want improved biking in the city, and we know that the city's already had some, some work done on it. So then we wanted to take a look at what we've done so far. Um, how have we done on, on meeting these? Um, and we found that a lot of the items are addressed, uh, but there's really a lot of opportunities to bring the plan to life. Um, there's still a lot of issues with uh, the city not being connected. There'll be some areas that there's lots of bike lanes, lots of bike paths, and you can get from one place to another, and then it ends. Or maybe an area that's supposed to be a you know recommended bikeway, and there's nowhere to bike. I mean, you legally can bike in the street, but it's, it's not technically safe. Um, and a lot of people still feel unsafe. Uh, biking in Geneva um, we've a lot of what we did was just talk to residents and you know just wandering around Geneva our friends our neighbors and sort of the resounding uh, sentiment is that people just don't feel safe biking they would do it more but they don't feel safe um, and then the complaint that they can't get oh I'd love to bike from the east side to third street and go shopping or go to a restaurant but I can't get there in a safe way and then if you add on having children in the factor it ups the ante on how unsafe people feel um, biking. So that's kind of our um, current status. Um, and then if you want to go to the next one, Ben, you can. Um, the other thing that we kind of found is that a lot of our neighbors um, are already updating their plans. Um, Batavia, uh, Kane County, St. Charles, they have bike plans that are actually a little newer than ours and they're already in the process of updating theirs um, and residents seem to be aware of that in Geneva and you know sometimes we've had questions of oh well why are why are they moving forward and and we don't seem to be or we did we did a lot of things several years ago but then it seems like things stalled out so it is kind of noticed and that kind of um, well, it was disappointing. It kind of made us feel good about, okay, we're kind of on the right track here in terms of something that the city should consider doing, which is why SPAC really felt that we should continue to take this on. Because that was part of our research was, is this even something that needs to be done? You know, it was in the strategic plan, but, you know, is it still a priority? And we really found that people are still very interested and there's still a lot of need. Um, and then the next one, so these are, it's kind of the same general idea. These are communities um, in our state that have gotten a bicycle friendly um, award or been recognized for their bicycle friendliness. Um, so the highlighted ones are kind of our closest neighbors on that list. Um, and having that designation uh, is sort of a city that people want to live in, businesses want to you know, start up their businesses there because it's bike friendly. It, it encourages people to bike to their business, give uh, more opportunities for enterprise to continue. Um, so that was just kind of a little highlight of kind of, again, what our neighbors are doing. And if we were on that list, it would be lovely. Um, 
So that was kind of our background research, went through documents, did a lot of combing, and then we did several uh, uh, engaging uh, efforts with uh, uh, stakeholders and with residents. Uh, we met with uh, some different organizations, spoke with some of them at our meetings. We had a bike to work event, which was really fun. And um, we did a bike challenge over the summer as well that people, similar to what the library does, where you could you know, fill out the little card and turn that in. And people were really interested in that. And then we had a, a bike night at the library. Um, if you wanna slip to the next one. Um, at the, again, we held this at the library. We had a, a bike night there. And we had really good turnout. We had about 50 uh, people attend that, uh, which we thought was pretty good. And it was really interesting because it was a pretty broad uh, cross section of Geneva. We had families with young children. We had senior citizens. We had teenagers. We had you know several um, of the high school students came um, and everything kind of in between. So we were really pleased with that uh, cross section of people that came out. And uh, what they, what came out of that, these were like the top things that came out of what people said to us at that event. Um, you can read them there, but if you wanna go to the next one, Ben, the top three were the overwhelming majority of what you know we, we we had a lot of different stations people could go to and they could fill out surveys or they could check boxes about what concerned them or do write-ins and this is overwhelmingly what those people said um, they wanted to see done better in Geneva and again part of me sharing this is you'll see this again in the recommendations when they come out but um, people wanted bike safety signage pavement markings um, bike lanes and then more connections again just to be able to bike from the west side to the east side if you wanted to. Um, so that was that night. And then this is just a little example. We had a fun, um, I don't know if any of you were there, but we had a fun little station where we had these big placards and we just had people could fill out a sign and said, would you bike here? Uh, just for us to get a feel of, of where people felt safe and sometimes to just visualize it helped. So this was an example of where 94% of the people that filled it out said they would ride. So this is on Lewis and there's a nice bike lane um, and 94% of the people said that they would bike there. Um, and then on the next one, this is an example of where 42% of the stakeholders said they would not bike here. Uh, the one on the left is Route 25. Uh, it's headed north. Uh, what's interesting about this one is this is a designated bike route and there's nowhere to bike. Um, and it's quite busy. Um, some of us may or may not choose to ride on the sidewalk, even though you're not supposed to, um, which I know a lot of people will say that, oh, well, we'll just ride on the sidewalk. This is an example of where that doesn't work well. It's very busy on the weekends here. Um, a lot of joggers, walkers on, on the sidewalk. It's really not a safe place on the road or on the sidewalk for bikers to bike. Um, and that was kind of reflected in the way people responded. And then the slide on the right is over by, it's between uh, Del Nor and Geneva Commons. And that was another one where people said they were not comfortable biking there. And that one is interesting to us too because it is a connection to a business. All of Geneva Commons, there's neighborhoods, I'm sure you all know the neighborhoods, there's Fisher Farms back there and um, what's the other one? Pepper Valley I think is back there. Um, so all those neighborhoods could be biking to the commons, but they don't really feel safe doing it. Um, okay, so these are our hot fresh takeaways. Uh, these next few slides are just sort of to illustrate. Our bike plan was made in 2004, but a lot has changed since 2004. Um, the Facebook was the Facebook, uh, just on colleges, and it was you know the dating app of old. And then we've got Shrek was the number one movie. Shrek 2, sorry, Shrek 2. Um, and then Lance Armstrong was our Tour de France winner. Um, so there's a lot's changed um, and, and part of, you know, what you'll see in some of our recommendations is, you know, there probably is a need to take a look at the bike plan and some of this stuff. There's a lot we can do without fully updating the whole plan. Um, but a lot has changed and one of the other things that has changed is that there's a lot of new tools in the toolbox uh, that we can utilize. Um, if you want to just go to the next one, you can kind of visually see what these are. Um, 
there's, you know, and we can go, we can talk about these at the end if you want more information on them, but there's different ways to do markings in the bike lanes, um, buffered bike lanes. Uh, there's a thing called an advisory bike lane now that you can use, and a bike boulevard has become a newer thing. And I don't think any of these things were really in place when we did the bike plan in 04, and they're not uh, high dollar, and uh, they work pretty well in other communities that, that we've seen use them. Um, and you can see they're, you know, Elmhurst, Batavia, uh, you know, people right by us are using those already. Um, and then some of our other takeaways, these are more just things to sort of, you know, keep in mind, um, you know, as you consider this, you know, going forward, if this is something that you guys agree to, to move forward on and, and take action on. Um, the rise of the e-bike is something we saw as well. A lot of people are um, doing e-biking, and it's probably something that should be considered, um, you know, as we move forward, if we're doing new developments or um, just something to consider, um, is that that's something that we want to look at how, how does Geneva want to deal with that. Um, and then also it's, there's sort of like a, um, a marriage between pedestrian and bike safety now. People seem to talk about it together in the same language instead of just pedestrian safety, bike safety. It seems to just be talked about together. So in terms of the approach, um, probably when you think about it, that's a good way to kind of frame your thoughts is that way. Um, and then we do know that a lot of new residents are bringing the culture, biking culture with them. Um, it's also just a little family that we ran into downtown that had moved here, I think from California. I'm not sure if everyone can read the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think they're from California, right? Yeah, I think the, the story there is that the um, family had uh, boomeranged back here from California and had this, you know, cool e-bike toting children around with them and someone snapped that and uh, I was trying to look on the stay play local tri-cities and i think they were at yeah they were at centrally yours doing candles so um we just we caught that coming through on social media and took a shot of that so that's just it's kind of a quick drive-by and like we said we can talk about these more you know when we're done but that's sort of the flyby of uh kind of how we dove into this some of the information that we learned um and then jim's going to walk us through uh the recommendations that we pulled out as a result of all that. Thank you. Well, we broke down our recommendations into two areas. Uh, the short-term or immediate ones where we prescribe some immediate uh, specific actions to be taken. And then we also had, secondly, a long-term approach, which was more strategic or visionary in nature, but it did have, it does have an end game of three to five years on it, so it's not just going to be out there forever. Um, for our short-term goals, most of those zeroed in on the 2005 uh, plan. That, as has already been mentioned, the 2005 plan uh, was really concerned with connectivity within the community of Geneva. Uh, the, the east side to downtown, the downtown to uh, Sunset Park, and now the new library, uh, and then on to Randall Road and the west side of Geneva, the Commons and Randall Square. And, and that's what it, that bike plan, which was quite, we were surprised to find how elaborate it was and, and really spelled out all these, these specific recommendations. Well, earlier this summer, we went ahead and, and uh, we drove and, and walked the whole route, and there was quite a bit done, actually, since 2005, uh, but there are some definite gaps that still exist from that plan, and uh, our recommendations, uh, short-term recommendations, zero in on eliminating those gaps. And, uh, the nice thing about it, with these gaps, most of them can be taken care of with the installation of bike lanes, signage, or some other uh, rather low budget uh, solutions. There's a couple that are a challenge, they're the first two listed up there which I'll mention, but these other, these other ones are not, they've been dealt with in other parts of the, commu of the community and have been successful. So I think, 
I think these are some things that uh, none of us are engineers and, and, and certainly we aren't uh, uh, bike planning experts by any means, but just based on what we've seen in this community and others that we've visited, uh, these seem to be doable things that can in the short term make it a more bike friendly community. In looking up at those, uh, th those, that list, the first two are the biggest challenge. One of the things that I mentioned is the, the 2005 plan uh, spelled out the importance of having a route from the downtown area to uh, Sunset. And of course, now we've got the new library on, uh, over on, on 7th Street as well. Um, that one is not cannot be remedied by simply putting in bike lanes. The, 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 there's parking on, the, on the, the streets that were designated for that, were Fulton and um, uh, Campbell, I believe, and um, they, aren't, they aren't real amenable to a bike lane. So it would require some other uh, tactics, such as either a bike boulevard or a, uh, uh, a bike advisory lanes that uh, that were mentioned earlier but it's probably doable but that one's a little bigger challenge the south street to southampton to randall that's probably the biggest challenge because that's that that section if you go from seventh seventh avenue or seventh street uh west and go by the geneva golf club a lot of parking there the road is not real wide, and it would be, even if it's a long-range plan on the part of the city, it's not something that's going to be remedied in the next couple of years. So that one would require some creativity to come up with to, it's not a long stretch, but it is definitely one that would need to be addressed in order to complete that loop to uh, Randall and to Western and to Sunset. The rest of those, as I said, um, all of those, uh, for the most part, are streets that could uh, handle bike lanes if that was the, per that was the favored, uh, uh, favored solution to, to do it. Um, but there, there would be other ones as well. Uh, the only non-route uh, uh, thing that's listed in there is the bike parking that's listed. And obviously, if you're going to try to promote biking, you've got to have places for people to put their bikes. And uh, again, there are a lot of things available out there that uh, talk about uh, uh, how you can park more bikes. There's, there's bike corrals that can take up in, in one parking spot, you can handle between 20 and 30 bikes. And so, and I know how valuable on-street parking is in this community and uh, to come in and say, we're gonna eliminate all that's not gonna happen. But there are some things that you can do that could uh, allow people to have their bikes and park them and, and uh, still have our parking downtown. So those are, those are the things, those are the areas or routes that we really think need to be addressed. Uh, uh, Western Avenue, 7th Street, uh, connecting the schools to the major bike routes. And, and then over on the east side, Dodson Street has some, that's a good connecting road. There are some things that could be done on that to make that bikeable from uh, east side drive down to uh, Route 25 and then on to the bike pathway. Uh, if we can go to the next one then, the next slide. Um, most of these recommendations are administrative in nature. Uh, you know, always looking for money, of course. Uh, but uh, a couple of the recommendations, um, one of the ones that I think deserves some attention is the reestablishment of the uh, bike and pedestrian committee uh, that used to exist this would be one a, a group that could could work act as a liaison between the city and the community to promote and enhance bike and pedestrian safety and uh, so that's that's on there most of these other things are 
are, uh, you know, don't really need much elaboration. So we can keep moving here to the, uh, there's a, a little bit more on the bike and pedestrian committee. Now for our longer term recommendations, um, there's several things listed there, including updating the, the current bike plan. But I think most of it comes around to a, a feeling on our part that, we, that the city needs to look at the establishment of a complete streets uh, policy. And that's a little bit of a general term, vague term, uh, but basically what it means is that you put together a compre comprehensive plan that encompasses uh, pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, uh, bus transportation, uh, the whole gamut. And, it, and by doing it in a comprehensive way, it's, it should all flow in the right, in the same direction, which should make it more uh, workable and acceptable. And um, uh, again, the long-term plans, uh, we, we didn't really have any specific things uh, or ways to go on that, but with the belief that we need to do it, I think the, 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 the area communities are doing this type of thing. And as we found out when we had our meetings this summer, uh, there's a lot of interest in biking in this community, and not not the what I call the professional bicyclists that you know wear the suits and the hats and everything else and and bike all the time. This is just the everyday people that uh, families and so forth. And it, it with all the people out walking and so forth, it it has become somewhat of a problem when people don't have a place that they can they can bicycle. And I I see you know some of our younger people have picked up bad habits with respect to bicycling and I think uh, um, you know that's a whole nother area the education piece but uh, these are the things that we feel uh, both in a short term and in a long term basis are things that uh, you know we think are doable here and uh, they're the things that SPAC would like to see uh, looked at here. Thank you so much Mr. Kafer and Ms. Manon. And I think now is the appropriate time to put it out there for questions. Mr. Maladra. So I'd ask, um, short term, immediate, long term, whatever, do you have, do you have sort of a sense of priorities? Um, an example of what I'm wondering, based off the comment you just made about parking, um, do you think maybe it would be a good idea to focus first on establishing some bike parking in certain areas like downtown or at the library because people are, you know, maybe they're willing to brave crossing South Street or getting to the downtown, but if there's no convenient place to safely leave your bike, they're not going to bother. Just a thought or a question. I'll jump in there and then if anyone else feels like they have additional information. I think what I'd like to reframe us for is to say that our immediate priorities are ones that exist in the bike plan that are, are doable and accomplishable. And I think that getting an uh, easier solution downtown to park is something that we found doesn't seem to be cost prohibitive, um, does seem to be something that to Mr. Kafer's point, you can use one parking spot to accommodate 20 to 30 bikes that with a little bit of collaboration and conversation is something that seems to be something that could be done relatively uh, within the short term. I won't say easy because as we know, nothing's ever easy, right? But yes, I think anything that we listed as an immediate action item, we did so using the context of the bike plan that already existed, all of the research that went into that, all of the additional research that we did over the past year. and. Um, and so I think we can confidently say that we don't want to put a number one, a number two, a number three on it, but if it's in the items listed as immediate action items, it's because we did the diligence, and potentially even Jim Kafer specifically <laughs> did the due diligence to drive around to each of these places and go, okay, based on the understanding that has been presented to me thus far, these things are doable and accomplishable. Alderman Ruby. Thank you. First, thank you for everyone for all of your work and research and time that went into that. I, I really appreciate it. I'm sure we all do. Um, 
I just, I have a question on something near where I live that you didn't touch on. I'm just curious um, if you guys looked at this at all. The, the Prairie Path um, crossing on Kirk, it, there's this, uh, I don't know what it's called, the, the light, you know, the, they can push a button, pedestrians or bicyclists, which seems fantastic, um, but I have witnessed so many near accidents um, because one car will stop and the car behind them doesn't realize or, you know, they swerve around or there's a, you know, a giant semi that takes much longer to, to slow down and stop, uh, you know, you name it. Um, one, I think, simple solution um, that would be helpful, I mean, this isn't the answer, but um, there are some decorative tall grasses in the median and I'm just, I'm curious if anyone has researched that at all. I, I feel like maybe if we just eliminated those tall grasses, that might possibly um, improve some safety, some visibility, but I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to put it out there for discussion and see if, yeah. if you guys had any knowledge on that. Thank you for your observation. Um, and yes, it was something that we addressed. You can sort of see behind you the connection between Prairie Path and, Path and Fox River Trail. That's not specifically crossing over Kirk Road is not um, what is recommended there. But to your point about the tall grasses, when we talk about something like a complete streets policy, complete streets encompasses greenery as something that is used and utilized to make the street uh, pedestrian and bicycle safe. Um, and the specifics about something like that would be something we would have to defer back to the city in terms of um, whether or not those things are, are doable. So we want to make sure we touch base with them. And didn't mean to be distracting there. Ben was whispering the things. And, yeah. if, and Ben, if you'd like to add something I, there as well. I was just going to add, um, just knowing that sometimes things get cut off on screens. And I, I zoomed this, tried to zoom this in for the benefit of those here in the audience. Um, but that's why um, on your handouts, knowing that some of the text is small, um, gave you a handout of those slides so you can see some of those as well. Um, and then I think the only thing I was going to add in about the recommendations and just, you know, kudos to SPAC for all the research that they've done. I mean, they had speakers come in from um, several different bike advocacy organizations, a former member of the Bike and Pedestrian Task Force to gather input as well and kind of hear about the whole evolution of the bike plan. Um, and, and you probably heard some different numbers earlier, 2004, 2005. Um, you know, the bike plan took a few years to put together, but uh, to, as Jim noted earlier, officially adopted in 2005. Um, but along, along the way uh, of gathering that research and getting there, one of the things that SPAC was very mindful of doing was really looking at the routes and areas that I think the term I heard was, you know, the greatest ROI as far as the existing plan and not really trying to you know, really trying to take an active role in, in staying out of trying to engineer a solution for every part, knowing that, um, and, you know, and Rich Babbitt isn't with us this evening, but knowing that there are different IDOT and municipal standards for every type of roadway. Um, so some solutions, while, as SPAC talked about, it seemed very, boy, you know, this, this would look really good here, or this seems like it'd be a good fit here. We just could never answer those questions all the time of, well, is that solution going to work and what's the dollar value on it? So, um, but yeah, Rich, Rich uh, in, in fact, back to their credit, actually, we tried to set up a meeting a few times to actually go a little bit more into capital project planning with Public Works, but the, um, um, unfortunately, the schedules never aligned due to some unforeseen conflicts. So, um, yeah. And I, th I think your main concern was the safety mm -hmm. issue there. And I think you see the same thing. Some communities have put in now the push button pedestrian lights that flash and then cars are supposed to stop. And I think in both cases, I, th I think there's a learning curve involved with all of this and there's an, going to be an education piece. Anything that's adopted, you can just leave things as they are and hope everything works okay. But I really think for anything to really be instituted, there's going to have to be an education piece for uh, not just young people, but the community as a whole, so that they understand that when, when you approach this area, be prepared that if these lights are flashing, you need to stop. And, uh, 
you know, you hope that it doesn't, someone doesn't, uh, hasn't learned yet and still does that. But I think the piece with the grass, too, uh, safety-wise, it seems like those should be shorter. Thank you, Mr. Kafer. I also want to add that um, the one of the um, action items was to reinstate a bike and pedestrian safety committee, and the education piece in and of itself can come from the efforts of that committee, um, and that's just something to take into consideration as one of the immediate action items. Alderman Caven. Thank you. Um, just let me first say um, thank you to all of you. Um, I think that a lot of these are really um, seem like some pretty practical things that should be able to be done. I think you know, there's been a lot of uh, really good thought in some of the items that are in here. Um, that flashing light that you were just um, discussing, you know, sometimes when I'm coming back from the M14 down in Aurora, my son and I will cut back up out route, up route 25. And before you hit the south part of downtown in Batavia, they have one of those on the route 25. I don't know how well they work with a road with a median, since there's the two lanes of traffic on each side, but I see cars stopped at that one all the time for people that cross 25 in Batavia, and it seems to be, and I've had to stop there numerous times myself, so I, I certainly think that they're um, effective. Um, one other quick question, when we're looking at the recommendations, um, the priority, uh, priority areas routes, um, I'm looking at the one that says South, South Street to Southampton. I feel like there already is a bike lane painted in on South Street between between Southampton and that, the tunnel or the, the, the walkway tunnel that goes underneath Randall Road over by where that storage facility is off of South Street. Isn't there already a isn't there already bike lane there? I think we have a picture of that street in one of yeah, the there, sides. Yeah, there is right? one. I think it's a um, less... I, I don't think it's as wide as it's really supposed to be. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty thin. I, I dot it's says they down. should be at least four feet. I think that one's probably pushing it. But there is one okay. from Southampton. It's that stretch that's right before that that there isn't okay, anything. Okay, just like Burgess Norton the Golf Club from there yes. or down to seven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's how you connect down towards, towards the library. Well, yeah, that makes yeah. that makes sense because I think there's also when you, as you go up. Um, Southampton as it turns into Northampton to connect it to over by where Williamsburg Elementary is. I feel like there's one there as well. That one's wider than the one that's on South Street. But no, I, I think that all of these recommendations are very reasonable, logical. Um, I think you guys did a good job of coming up with them. So that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Mayor. Thank you. Um, this is really great. I'm very excited for uh, bike safety to improve in the city. Um, I, I commute to Chicago every day and I've seen the development of the bike lanes and the improved safety measures that have been taken there and how much, how much it's improved how many people are biking. So it, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of attitude. Like we might say there's not that many people biking now, but it really is because they don't feel safe. Um, in particular, I think that stretch of South Street where it passes uh, the golf club, I drive that every day, and um, it, it's just dangerous. Uh, if the, the sun comes from the west and it, it gives like a, a strobe effect as you're driving, and the, the bicyclists that would be riding on the right-hand side, if there's cars parked in that lane, it, it really does seem uh, hazardous to me. Um, and then if they're riding on the other side where the um, sidewalk is, which is where I usually choose to go, uh, crossing Western is pretty hazardous because I don't think people have it in mind that there might be you know, a, a bike coming from that side. So I'd, I'd really like to see um, a bike lane put in on, on South Street uh, that would be appropriately sized. And what I've seen in Chicago is that the uh, parking can be outboard of the bike lane. So there's a bike lane, then the parking, then the lane of traffic. And for the golf club, where, where they do have parking quite often in the evening hours, uh, it seems like a good idea to do that kind of solution. But it also occurs to me that SPAC, I mean, you guys aren't engineers, so how, how can we put this into motion so that you can have the uh, tools that
that are needed to come forward with like fully developed plans? That's a really interesting question and I'm glad that you posed it in that way. Um, the first thing I want to say is I what I hear from you and what I'm hearing from other members of council is that that particular stretch of the road is one that we all talk about and recognize and it was one that came up for us regularly. I think um, in terms of purview and role here, the question that you've posed is one where you've reached the end of our responsibilities because I don't think we come up with the specifics yeah, right. on how that happens. I think we've done pretty much everything within our realm of responsibility relative to, to biking. But the good news is that what we found was there are a lot of people who can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and it's in this document and it's in this, this presentation and we can collaborate with the city to do that. And I think we can do so um, relatively reasonably. I think what we need is, is your help as the individual is responsible for making changes within the city. So, like there are consultants, I would imagine that that do. We uh, had some design. people come and speak to us, yes. But I think again, it comes back to we need to 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 round back to who exists within the city and their responsibilities. So I think that that person we Babka, right? Well, I I just had um, you'd asked about process, mm -hmm. and so you know the the timing of this is very opportune, and that you know city staff is now starting to work on on the foundation of building the next two years fiscal budgets. And then of course the strategic planning, uh, city council's annual strategic planning session will be coming up in November. And that's really an opportunity for um, city council to provide some direction or um, provide some input on, on what comes forth in that next budget. But the, I think it goes back perhaps to where SPAC started almost a year ago of looking at the state of the existing bike plan and seeing an opportunity to breathe life into the strategic plan breathe life into the existing bike plan, but really put a spotlight on it tonight and say, City Council, you know, there's, um, SPAC found some opportunities perhaps um, within the existing bike plan, but also two of those bullet points that SPAC had up on the screen, um, one being the reestablishment of a bike pedestrian committee, um, just hearing about some of the roles that they played. Um, I know SPAC had a lot of good questions for the former member that evening, and then, um, Secondly, in addition to the plan, um, there was the other one on there was putting it out there for a future, um, perhaps a, an action item in the existing or in an updated strategic plan, but really recognizing that um, at some point the city's bike plan is, is from 2005. And that, that would be an opportunity and a venue for staff to engage consultants, work with engineers, and really figure out what solutions um, engineering dollars wise work for the city of Geneva going forward. Thank you, Ben. I would say that said, even without comprehensively redoing the bike plan, there were enough action items on there that were part of the bike plan that was previously done that have not changed significantly enough that we wouldn't need to wait until that happens in order to make forward momentum. So we just want to be cautious and conscientious to say, you know, let's not kick this can down the road a little bit further and wait for the next bike plan to come out when there's, you know, five to ten reasonable items um, that can be done with, uh, you know, some modification of the budget or some, um, so just food for thought. Yeah, and I also thought that the idea of uh, parking within the parking structure would be amazing because I know if you do bike to the train or to downtown and it rains, your bike's all wet, the seat's all wet, or you have to put a plastic bag over it. So I personally, like as a, as a commuter, I think that would be a really, really great amenity and improve on how many people are, are interested in biking to the train. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, uh, I'm really excited about this, I've told, um, Ms. Frankel about that already and I've been um, anecdotally I just wanted to share asking a lot of friends about this and seeing what they thought and no surprise people are generally excited about it I found when people were sort of wish-washy um, I don't bike a lot or I really don't have a lot of interest you say I, I was asking well what about if you had an e-bike would you want to just tool around town and then it was like an enthusiastic yes that'd be great if there was just like a circle around Geneva I could run on go on my e-bike and 
get out of the house for, you know, whatever time that would take. So I was really glad to see that the e-bikes were part of that. I do think that's something to really take into consideration um, and, and could really work well in our town. Um, one thing I was hoping to see in here that I get a lot from my ward um, is there's no good place to cross, uh, say, from Fargo over to the Fox River Trail right on the other side of 31. Um, there's the Japanese gardens are kind of right there, just a little bit to the south. Um, and so I, I know we have a state route there, so it's not as easy a, a, of a fix as possible, but I know that's something in my ward that people say a lot that um, they have to go all the way downtown to catch the Fox River Trail. And I'm not saying all the way, we're a small town, but, um, <laughs> But, you know, it sort of feels, especially if they want to go south to Batavia or to Aurora or something like that, um, it sort of feels out of the way. So I, I was, I, I think it's up for discussion later, but, you know, one of those pedestrian crossings like um, Gabe and Becky were talking about, um, I, I think would be adequate there. I don't think we need anything, you know, uh, too crazy. But um, I just wanted to throw that out there in terms of, uh, my specific ward. And then um, one other idea I, I have been thinking of is working with the Chamber of Commerce for festivals and events and having more of a bike corral. Um, I mean, I know there's plenty of places with fences and I've done it myself, riding a bike down there and, you know, just lock it up wherever. But I think it would promote the idea of biking to our local festivals or biking to downtown if there was a uh, free or, you know, for a dollar or whatever it might be to check your bike and um, and they're open as long as the uh, festival's open. Um, so just another idea there. And then my last one was um, the committee, the Bike and Safety Committee. So just a question, is that part of SPAC or that committee part, a committee of the city council? The answer to that question is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a committee that doesn't exist yet, and I think we could talk about how that would look uh, later. But, um, you know, I think the important thing is that we think about how we implement it at some point. Um, and that, that committee can then partner with the Chamber of Commerce and, mm -hmm, and can lead sure. that drive and that initiative. And we did have some very enthusiastic conversations about wanting to ride our bike to the festival <laughs> and why we couldn't sure. just do that, right? Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're on board with that as well. Okay, well, and thanks for ever, all the great work. I think this is awesome, and I'm excited to get it started. Alderman Swanson. Thank Resorted. you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the great work that they've done as well. Uh, I, I'm sensing from all of the council members that there's an enthusiastic support for doing something. And I think what Ben mentioned is our first opportunity to do something quickly. And that is our November planning session. We can work with uh, our, our public works to determine on those immediate lists of homes or um, streets to mark as bike paths what where where do we have the capability where do we have the width to do so and what would be the cost and how could we work it into our annual marking plan so so I, I, I love that and and I would champion that for our offsite in November is is to do that come up with how much is it going to cost and what can we do and when and so I like that and, and I think uh, I think we will do that in November so at least we will start and see what of those immediate things can we do easily. So thank you. Great. I like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I took the phone. Just, uh, just uh, one thought. Uh, the uh, uh, bike path that uh, Becky was referencing on the east side, uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, when we have visitors from the east that come across Kirk Road and then uh, into Eastside Drive, I think a lot of times there's confusion there as to where to go. And uh, I think something as simple as repositioning the sign that, uh, I don't know who's responsible for that sign, probably the Forest Preserve, I would assume. There is a sign there, but it faces east and west, and it should face north and south, so when bikers are approaching, they can see the sign, and then they can uh, read the directions on it because a lot of times people end up a block south and they say where do we pick up the bike path and uh, they don't know where to go necessarily and you might say well didn't you look at the sign 
Well, but it would be, it's real relatively easy to ride by it probably because they're looking at traffic on East Side Drive and there's a sign. And the other thing is if you're wanting to go down to, to downtown Geneva or if you want to go to Aurora, then what they should do is they should take your route on Dotson. So they don't need to go through the cemetery up and over and that that would help uh, maybe our businesses in the downtown area and it would it be it'd be uh, helpful I would think that they wouldn't have to route themselves all the way up through the cemetery and then back onto the bike path and then south that's just a thought but I think uh, or and the other point would be uh, some arrows and uh, there is a lane along East Side Drive on the east side uh, but if there was some arrows and some bicycle markings in that lane there's very seldom cars that are parked in it so I mean it would be fairly accessible to bikers it's not like we have on South Street over by the golf course uh, I mean when you have uh, lacrosse or soccer uh, over there sometimes you do have a lot of cars but I'm just saying that that would be one that we could target relatively easy with painting and markings so that's all I had well, one of the recommendations was to there's a definite need to improve signage and uh, improve it and increase the amount of it so that people do know where they are going and where they can go and and that type of thing. Yeah, right there at East Side Drive as you come off the bike path, as you tee into East Side Drive, if there's a sign that said Geneva, Aurora, that direction, El St. Charles and Elgin, that direction. I think it would simplify uh, life for a lot of bicyclers, especially if they're new to the area. And those are people that are probably coming out of Chicago or Elmhurst or uh, places, places further east. So, thank you. Can I jump in here? The, um, uh, I, I also wanted to say thank you to, uh, uh, for all the work that, that went into this. Um, uh, I'd like to follow on with uh, uh, Alderperson Swanson in terms of uh, identifying things we can start budgeting for. I think if we could uh, have a couple of successes, introduce a couple of things, see how they uh, how the city responds to it. I think that would put some momentum behind behind all this. So I, I look forward to uh, having some discussion on this in, uh, in September. Um, but then I also keep coming back to the, uh, you know, we're dealing with uh, state routes, which get into, you know, bisect our city and pose significant challenges for us doing what we want to accomplish, what we want. Uh, so I'll, I'll be curious how we might be able to, to work around that. Uh, to the e-bike trend, I spend uh, during the summers a, a lot of time on the front porch, maybe too much. Um, and there are a lot of e-bikes. I mean, people are just spending a lot of money on e-bikes and it's a pretty great, uh, pretty, pretty solid trend. I think that would really make a uh, I think it'd get a lot more people out here uh, biking. Um, uh, so that's it. I, I'm looking forward to discussing this and hopefully we can pull in some successes um, pretty soon. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Bruno. Mr. Paper? Yeah, I, to address your concern with the state conflicts and county conflicts and so forth, that was the main reason why when we put our recommendations together, that for the short term at least, we focused on only the internal routes so that there wasn't going to, you aren't going to have any problems. The, the IDOT has general guidelines for uh, bike safety and so forth, but they would not have specific jurisdiction on these routes that we're talking about right here. So that shouldn't be a problem uh, for any of the ones listed here uh, with the possible exception of the Route 25 crossing at Dodson Street. Thank you. Do we have any additional questions? Alderman Mayor. 
There is one more area that I think uh, should be identified as a concern, and that's where Williamsburg crosses 38. Um, the steep incline at the uh, north side of the street, really, uh, I've seen kids, uh, kids come down too quickly and almost end up in traffic uh, on their bikes. And I think that, um, you know, it would be a, a major project, but should be improved upon over the you know some some amount of years because uh, i just see it as you know all the people that are trying to get over by the high school or downtown because there's no continuous sidewalk from the pepper valley region down to downtown you you really need to cross there to get to downtown or get to the high school area and uh, with that that bus shelter and the, the steep incline on the sidewalk opposite, it just ends up, it scares me a couple times when I see people uh, trying to navigate down, you know, early bike riders and things like that, or parents with uh, burlies on the back of their bikes. So something to add to the list, I think. I just said thank you. I think everyone heard me. I will defer back to Mayor Burns. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair told me to keep her full with coffee, so I was concerned about that. Is there anything else you'd like to add regarding this topic? Otherwise, we can certainly move on to, I think, is that correct, Madam Chair? Any other issues that are percolating that you want to bring up for initial discussion now, I think would be the time. It's not really a um, concern, but I know you guys have spent like meeting after meeting after meeting on this bike stop. So what's the next, what's the next topic to tap off, tackle in SPAC after you, after you move on for this? That's a great question. Um, I think part of it will be the response to uh, what happens when we meet in November and the takeaways from that meeting. And then I will get back with SPAC and we will talk about our, our future plans. So we don't have that determined quite yet, but I think a lot of it will be born out of what the priorities seem to be relative to the meeting, at the priority meeting. And everyone knows that Chairwoman Frankel is part of that strategic planning and goal setting workshop in November, on November 4th. So Hi. you're actually chairing that meeting, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Just a, a general comment. I, I feel that, um, the success of any efforts that we make really depends on drivers being aware and paying attention. Um, I, I wish there were some simple strategy to uh, make people pay better attention. But um, you know, any anything that we can do to promote just awareness. And just people paying attention. I mean, we've had, um, I, I just, it's hard for me to have this conversation without acknowledging the um, most recent accident um, on 38, um, the, just last week. Um, and that's the second time since I've been on council that there's been a fatality on 38. Um, Nothing has been officially announced. I don't know anything, but just presumably, my presumption, due to um, perhaps the the sun just blinding the driver, not being able to see at that time of day. I believe that was the official reason for the the older gentleman on 38 who was in the crosswalk. Um, so I, I assume that's what happened again. But regardless, um, you know that that's completely out of everybody's control. But in a lot of cases, drivers are just distracted. And you know anything we can do to just raise awareness and get ask our drivers to you know focus on driving and focus on blocking out all the distractions of, of life and paying attention to pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, I, I feel like 
that is really the key to people's safety. And all of these ideas are fantastic, and I, I love all of this. I just, I think it all, it's all part of the same puzzle. So I just wanted to, to share that. Thank you. I just wanted to comment. Um, one of the things I think SPAC did a really good job of distilling information down over the past several months, and especially from that bike night, was hearing, you know, hearing residents comment on, um, you know, I'm looking for safety education or looking for opportunities to learn or, you know, where's, where's the bike event or, you know, how, um, maybe not necessarily safety, but how do I become confident using roadways on a bike in Geneva, knowing that there's different, there's places that are more conducive and not. But that was, I think, you know, and Winnie, feel free to step in and correct me if I'm, I'm making too bold of an assumption here, but I think that was a big part of why SPAC put the recommendation about the bike and pedestrian committee was knowing that education, engagement, and all these things will take time. Um, I, think they, I think that was the idea of that would be a natural outlet of knowing there were so many people who almost were, you know, ready to sign up at the bike night to do something. If there's, if there's that outlet and passion, that might be a good opportunity to focus that in the community. Um, you know, there may be a new group of residents and people who, who call Geneva home who'd be willing to take on things like running bike corrals or providing some public education events. I mean, one of the, one of the things that was told to SPAC was described um, some of the former events that the bike committee used to, bike and pedestrian committee used to work on, which was, um, I think their you know, real point of pride from them was the Earth Day event, if I recall correctly, was they had really worked over the years to get people there. And then, in fact, in their presentation, they showed on the flip side, when they went to start a new event, you know, they'd have nine volunteers and four residents would show up for it. So they, they really kind of cautioned back to say, building momentum and getting people to start coming to your things and hearing your message takes takes some time. Feel free to elaborate on that. I think you covered it. Yeah, just as, as a comment with, with everything too is, is um, you know, I was disappointed we weren't able to have a direct conversation with, with Public Works too because I had a, you know, a lot of questions as far as, um, you know, what the city does when it comes to like our street imp you know, improvement plans. You know, every so often we're getting emails through, through the city about our, our, which streets are being improved. Um, and I don't know when, that, when, when the streets are being improved, what the planning goes into it. Are they actually looking to bring up, you know, markings just bare bones to, you know, current standards or is there any thought with uh in including some some better markings whether it's not only for bike implementation but for pedestrian crosswalks and stuff so um you know that's uh that's something i'm still just personally sort of unclear of you know with as far as how that that happens and the the um then the city level and in, in, in public work so um but i think there's a lot of opportunity like we talked about with a lot of these these um low-hanging fruit items where we can be proactive with you know a lot of simple things and simple fixes with with bike implementation and, and pedestrian safety because um you know as alderman ruby mentioned the last thing that anybody wants to do is is be reactionary if there's something that happens is you know when it comes to safety and somebody getting hurt so um i think there's a lot of opportunity for the city to uh to move forward with with some of these recommendations um, and like I said, it's, it's coming up for dis discussions with, with the uh, fiscal budget for the next year or two. And, and as you always see, whether it's, you know, national, gov federal government, state government is when, uh, when a, an entity is putting forth their budget, that's, that budget is, is supposed to be reflective of what the city is and what the city stands for. So hopefully the conversation will, uh, will move forward where, um, we have like a you know some line item budgetary, and I've said that this, the, to my you know co-members on SPAC too that I think that the city needs to you know have a line item in that in our budget that's that's reflective of what we want to do to improve our our safety and our bike implementation plan. So that's all I want. That's all I wanted to add. I was thinking just to follow up on that exactly the same thing that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the line item in our budget is called, but street improvement program, and then we would have another line item that would be bike improvement program, and hopefully we'd be able to allocate some money each year moving forward to that because I'm sure it's something that always is going to need to be updated um, and maintained. So 
I think there'll always be a need for that. So that's kind of where my head was going, going into this November meeting was exactly that idea of having a separate line item in the budget. So I think great idea. I, w I just want to say I'm encouraged by how positively responsive everyone on council has been thus far. So I look forward to seeing what comes from the meeting. So thank you. Anyone else on anything? Mr. McCready, anything else we need to cover? Last chance for anyone, by anyone? Mr. Bruno, again in your undisclosed location, anything you want to add? No, Mayor, thanks. Thank you. Who would like to do the honor of entertaining a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Motion by. <laughs> Oh, God help us. <laughs> Billy gets it. All in favor of adjourning this joint meeting, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Bruno, aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very, very much.